start. Hello, Assalamu alaikum, uh, fourth year students. Uh, I am Dr. Kamran with you. So today uh, uh, we are uh, discussing a tumor uh, which can uh, uh, problem which can cause problem with the hearing and this is called acoustic neuroma this tumor arises from the vestibular nerve it's also called the vestibular schwannoma it's, uh, it's it's grow from the vestibular nerve sheet the covering cells which cover the schwann cell which cover the nerve so it usually arises from the internal auditory canal portion of the vestibular nerve and then it goes grows into the medially medially to bar towards the cerebellopontine angle cerebellopontine angle so as you know uh, from this uh, site initially this uh, tumor have a uh, symptoms related to the nerve because it arising from the vestibular nerve but it compressing all the nerves which are present in the internal orotimeters what are the nerves there cochlear nerve which is a part of the vestibular cochlear nerve and the facial nerve so it because the space in the internal uh, orotimeters is very small so when it started to grow it first compressed the nerves which are in immediate relation to it in the internal orotimeters and then as the size increases it has only space to go into the brain medially into the cerebellopontine angle cerebellopontine angle and then the symptoms are gradually moves to the central nervous system to the cerebellar uh, symptoms to the pontine lesions okay so we'll see uh, in uh, according to the uh, ear the hearing problem the the balancing problem which this tumor usually cause okay here you can see just one minute you must nahi wo is tarah nahi hote is ka sterics no okay okay in this slide you can see this tumor uh, in the above slides this tumor is uh, in relation to the internal auditory canal and that goes to the cerebellopontine angles and here in a one mri we can see this tumor because mri you do, you cannot see the bones so only see the soft tissue so this uh, indicate the uh, acoustic neuroma in the cerebellopontine angle pressing this area cerebellopontine area okay middle here you can also see this uh, tumor coming out of the internal orotimeters and goes to the cerebellopontine area so this uh, is the most common intracranial schwannoma in the cerebellopontine angles that's most common tumor in the cerebellopontine angle up to the 80% it is benign extremely slow growing so in it it means uh, this wording means it is slow growing it means uh, if the patient is very elderly and uh, uh, the symptoms are not much and the tumor is small we can expect that this tumor can grow to cause symptoms probably in the 5 to 10 years so we can leave it in this in this patient so this is mean of the slow growing tumor and uh, the other is the uh, its prevalence is 30 per 1 million it's not very uh, common but it is the most common tumor in the cerebellopontine angle and some pupils which have neurofibromatosis which have many schwannomas many nerve tumors in their body all over the nerves uh, so these patients have the tendency to have this bilateral acoustic neuroma because they have the tendency to uh, neuromas involving many uh, nerves so in these patients with neurofibromatosis type 2 they may have bilateral acoustic neuroma okay this is the anatomy of the cerebellopontine angles you may have this knowledge because you already pass into the uh, uh, basics anatomy so 
the verbs here is from second to seventh. Second to seventh, and then is the eighth cranial nerve, and then is the anterior inferior cerebral artery. So it means that these nerves can also present with the lesion here, but the most common is a caustic neuroma, and there is anterior inferior cerebral artery. Any pathology of this can cause present in the cerebral pontine angle. The clinical symptoms we start with the uh, with the very initials. It is a progressive unilateral sensorineuring hearing loss. So it is a unilateral sensorineuring hearing loss in patient. If a patient complain uh, hearing loss uh, for which uh, there is no conductive elements, and on audiogram it shows that there is 10 dB or like this of asymmetry between the uh, both ear means. Normal ear is normal, and the other ears have 40, 35 decibel of hearing loss, which is sensorineural. Then we have to think about this tumor, and it is usually accompanied by tinnitus in the 65 percent of the cases. And the sensorineural hearing loss is retrocochlear. It involved because it involved the it involved the nerve, so we call it the hearing loss is retrocochlear. It is not involving the cochlear, it is behind this one. Mark difficulty in understanding speech out of the proportion of the pure tone audimity. If we see on um, hearing test, pure tone, it doesn't look to be very worse, but the patient have very much difficulty in understanding the speech. So this is the one of the uh, characteristics of the of the neural hearing loss in the sensor neural the the pathology involved the cochlea the hearing level and the discrimination is maybe uh, approximating each other but in patient which have a nerve damaging the nerve of the cochlea the hearing on the pure tone he can pick the pure tone Pure tone may be not worse, but when we see the speech understanding, it is out of the proportion. It is very worse. In some of the cases, in two, uh, two, three, five percent in some studies, it can present in the sudden hearing loss. Although it is a progressively, slowly improving, uh, slowly growing uh, tumor, but in patient, some of the patient it present with sudden hearing loss. Why? Because suddenly it has some bleed. So its pressure increase. Okay? So it is one of the cause of so in patient with sudden hearing loss, we have to again go for the to exclude the any acoustic neuroma. Although this tumor arises from the vestibular nerve, but the true vertigo is seldom seen. Why? Why? Because slow growing tumor, there is slowly compensation at the central level because it, it is compressing the nerve slowly, slowly, causing dysfunction of the nerve slowly, slowly of the vestibular. So the cerebellum balance this one. So as a true vertigo, it is a seldom that they have a true vertigo because slowly it is compressing the vestibular nerve and the brain stem and the cerebellum is continuously accommodating that one. Slowly, slowly. Any sudden change can cause a sudden feeling of vertigo. If it's slowly, one patient may not uh, perceive this, okay? What are the other nerves can involve? Fourth, sixth, ninth, tenth, eleventh, then twelfth because they are passing through the cerebellopontine angle. Okay, uh, when the pre uh, when the tumor is big one, it causes facial pain or numbness, facial weakness because of the uh, facial nerve cerebellar ataxia. Now the symptoms are coming uh, with cerebellum and hydrocephalus because of the pressure on the circulating system of the brain. Nausea, vomiting, as the there, there is increased intracranial pressure because of the hydrocephalus. So this is the progressive type of, but in most cases, they present with the uh, unilateral hearing loss and tinnitus, for which we cannot find any local pathology in the external canal in the middle ear. Okay. Uh, 
So signs are, as there's no uh, pathologies can be seen because the tumor is in the cerebral pontine or internal artery meters. What are the earliest signs? Is the corneal reflex. The earliest sign of, if uh, somebody can ask you, what is the earliest sign of uh, caustic neuroma? It is the impaired corneal reflex. If we touch the sclerocorneal uh, area with the brisk of uh, cotton, there will be no reflex. Okay? And then is the second to seventh cranial nerves. These are seven sensory flaws in the posterior superior aspect of the intern, in external uh, caustic meat, uh, external canal, auditory canal, it scars hit cell burger. Why? Because of the, because of the, this is seventh cranial nerves, problem with the seventh cranial nerve. The first is the fifth cranial nerve, which is uh, impaired of the corneal reflex. The second is the sensory deficit, because the facial nerve also supplies the posterior superior aspect of the external artery canal, it's called his cell burger signs. Third is the ninth and tenth palsy, because the pressure is coming more. So the ninth nerve, glossopharyngeal nerve, is also starting to be involved with the tenth nerve. So it is called pharyngeal and palatal and laryngeal paralysis. And as the nerve, uh, uh, as the tumor grows, it involves the eye, uh, uh, supplying the nerves to the eyes, which is called nystagmus, and then the cerebellar sign, which is ataxia, dysdiadocokinesia, and these symptoms. Okay. Investigation: If you find a person uh, which have a, a complaint of one-sided hearing loss which found to be sensory neuring hearing loss or neural hearing loss and uh, with a 10 decibel of difference between the two ears and you cannot find any pathology on the examination and some of the examination give you some idea that this may be the inver uh, the in, uh, the nerve of the vestibular with the mm, probable diagnosis of caustic neuroma then you have to go for hearing test okay this is a poor, in, uh, poor discrimination. One sign you have to know, it is a poor discrimination. The patient has hearing loss, but his, uh, his speech uh, perception is very worse. He cannot understand most of the words. Then is the acoustic reflex. The acoustic reflex comes when you are doing pure tone audiometry, when you will give a sound of 70 decibel, um, with the pure tone audimity above the hearing threshold, the usually the muscles, stability and muscle contact with this one, but because of the um, facial nerve problem, it may not be there because the, st uh, the best, uh, this facial nerve is not uh, very much intact in 70% of the cases you have. Chloric test, this is use the water to see the vestibule portion of the inner ear, although the patient have no symptoms, but because the vestibular vestibular shamanoma causing slowly, slowly problem with the, uh, over the vestibular apparatus, so the chloric test, the testing of the ear with the hot and cold water, the patient may have not reflex. No reflex means he has no nystagmus, he may, he may, may have no symptoms of nausea vomiting. Plane X-ray, maybe it will work or not work, but the best view is per orbital view. If you want to send a patient uh, with the suspicion that may, he may have a, uh, acoustic neuroma, you, so you have to advise, you have to say to the radiologist that I need a per orbital view. Okay? Which shows the through the orbit the internal acoustic meters. And any... Uh, any widening of this of one millimeter or like this it depends on the um, pers uh, uh, quality of the and of the radiologist of the uh, of the X-ray film or the perception or the experience of the radiologist to report it. But 
No, uh, CT scan is used as do in much of the cases um, where we need, want to have the very clear picture then to the plain X-ray. Um, it can detect, but it cannot detect. It may not detect the tumor which is very small, uh, present only in the internal metal, intermetal, uh, or internal meters, or internal, or it, uh, canal. Okay, internal caustic meters. Okay, and a tumor in the internal caustic meters cannot be picked with the CT scan. So. So the uh, one modality which can pick it even in the internal ac acoustic meters is the MRI. It can detect very small tumor in the very stage, early stage of tumor. So uh, this audiogram, which is the hearing test in these patients, you can see it here that this patient uh, on the right side uh, has sensory hearing loss in the high frequency uh, up to 10 decibel or like this. So in even this uh, percentage of hearing loss is called asymmetrical hearing loss and this subject to be investigated for acoustic neuroma or the other causes of sensory hearing loss. Okay, uh, this is more clear. Here you can see the left and right here. The right is okay. The left you can see a sensory neural hearing loss in the high and mid frequencies and uh, with a great difference. Now maybe the difference between the two sides is uh, 50 to 40 de decibel, okay? So this is sensorineuring hearing loss and when we can say this is neural um, on this because if we do the speech uh, perception threshold then it is very bad. The patient cannot perceive, understand, discriminate the words spoken to him. Okay. The one is uh, when the MRI was not available frequently, uh, one test for this is Barra test, brain, uh, brain stem evoked audiometry. Okay. Here we, uh, cons uh, we uh, do the he hearing threshold level in the both here, left and right. And we can see, uh, we have to see the fifth nerve delay in the caustic tumor. There is the traveling of the, of the sound wave picked by the um, audiometry, barrier audiometry. There is a delay in the fifth nerve. You can compare it the, uh, with the above one, which is the normal one, 6.25 seconds, milliseconds. And here in the other, uh, downward, the fifth nerve is 6.55 milliseconds. So there is a delay. So it means that the sound reflects the sound potential which was passing through the nerve was delayed because of some compression by the tumor and it was considered that it could be the caustic neuroma. So with the MRI you can pick it at an earlier age with a very high sensitivity and specificity. Okay, here is the MRI. You can see there is no bone. We cannot see the bone. Okay, this is the cerebellopontine angle, the cerebellum and the pontine area in the posterior fossa and you can see one whitish mass coming out of the internal auditory canal to the compressing this area, okay? This is the acoustic neuroma, okay? This is the one which is much bigger with the pressure symptoms on the cerebellum causing the symptoms of ataxia and on the pontine level and pressing the cisterna of the CSF. So it also cause uh, encephalocele, seal, okay, uh, the, uh, and increase the uh, pressure in the brain, okay. Hydrocephalus, we call it, okay. This is the sagittal section here. You can see uh, the cerebellopontine angle and this tumor causing pressure on the cerebellopontine area. Okay, what is the treatment? As we already noted from our um, initial discussion that this is slow growing tumor. So what is the role of conservative treatment? Since especially in the elderly vestibular schwannoma, a slow growing tumor, our weight and strategy should be considered. If it is 70 year old man, then we consider that it over the 
coming five or ten years it may not grow to give the more symptoms because surgery in these patients in every patient with this tumor is have the uh, complications so if it is slow growing we know it's may time it, it for some time it may be silent for years so we can wait and see or we have to follow the patients every year or six months and see with the our modalities mri how much it is growing and uh, if it is le very less growing so we, we can uh, follow the strategy of wait and see then uh, one is now radiotherapy this is the benign tumor so why we have to go for radiations this radiation is a, spe uh, a specific one which is ca uh, called gamma knife. It is, it is stereotactic radio surgery. It, it focus, it focus on to the, of the tumor and give uh, hundreds of small impulses of um, uh, radiation to this tumor with the help of CT or MRI and uh, then we'll see that this radio uh, uh, radiotherapy can regress the tumor okay over the time and uh, radio surgery as the first therapeutic option is recommended in bilateral schwannoma but when only the tumor are small a very big term tumors because in bilateral every ear surgery have to consider the hearing status of the ear and the other ear. If the if the patient is only one ear, or if the uh, pathology involves the both ears, so we have to consider the hearing, which is very precious to the patients. Okay, so whenever we have decided any surgical procedures like in Meniere's disease, like in uh, positional vertigo, to go for the invasive surgery, we have to consider the hearing threshold of that ear and to know the status of the hearing in the other ear. So uh, annual imaging is recommended for all patients being managed conservatively for the rest of their life or until vestibular shamana growth is seen, seen to be to a certain limit. Okay. So we have to follow these cases for follow up to see because this radio uh, therapy gamma knife surgery is not a surgery it is only a knife means it is very precise like a surgeon's knife to attack this uh, tumor very precisely the center of the tumor so it gets fibrosis over the time it will get small in size okay this is gamma knife surgery the patient used to be in a specialized uh, machine and then his head is stabilized and then with the radiation uh, focus on a, a, a certain center of the tumor so get it get fibrosed with the time and shrink in size okay here we can see a one patient with the tumor here in the a it was a big one and over the time you see the center will go into necrosis fibrosis with the less blood supply and in the c it shrink in time with the less compression on the cerebellar pontine area okay so we have to follow in either case we operated or not operated we have to see it in the follow-up how the tumor is behaving uh, differential diagnosis in the uh, cp angles are meningioma and all the tumors arising from the nerves and the pathology arising from the vessels blood vessels uh, can be seen on the MRI with the characteristic features okay so we can differentiate with the uh, MRI as the most tumors have some characteristics finding on the MRI okay prognosis is uh, uh, conservative therapy with derivative tumor uh, control is around 96 percent in uh, with the uh, uh, with uh, it's used to be uh, you can notice the uh, regression in the size up to 50% over the eight weeks, okay? And uh, because this is not a uh, surgery, so it have a uh, no mortality or CSF leakage. Um, uh, 
uh, and then if it is not uh, responding to this radiation then we have to go for the surgery and it is this area is the uh, um, difficult one or to operate because uh, this is into the CP angle and now you have to approach this area which gives you access to the internal artery canal and the other uh, CP angles because there are very much cranial nerves are there. Okay, thank you so much. So uh, this is us all about the acoustic neuroma and you have to please uh, go through this lecture and then you have to uh, see the literature uh, needed this and to make you clear about the any point which is not um, clear to you during this uh, lecture. Thank you so much.